We'll begin with the Central Bank of Nigeria, which has revealed upwards the cash withdrawal limits it announced earlier. In a circular, the bank said the decision is based on feedback received from stakeholders. The maximum weekly limits by individuals is now pegged at 500,000 naira per week instead of the initial 20,000 naira. Weekly maximum withdrawals for corporate institutions was moved from 500,000 to 5 million naira. According to the CBN, where there are cash withdrawal requests above the limits for legitimate purposes, a processing fee of 3% will apply for individuals and 5% for corporate organizations. Yes, indeed. And in addition, third-party checks above 100,000 naira shall not be eligible for payment over the counter. And the prevailing limit of 10 million naira on clearing checks will remain. The CBN says it recognizes the vital role that cash plays in supporting underserved and rural communities and will ensure an inclusive approach as it implements a transition to a more cashless society. Well, the limits announced are with effect from January 9, 2023. And to have a conversation uh, as regards to all of these developments with the Central Bank of Nigeria, renewed economist uh, Professor Kenny Fair, as well as Arise News Analyst Frank Tete, joins us uh, tonight to really have uh, this conversation. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. And Frank Tete, I want to actually start with you in our offsite studio because I know that you have reacted almost violently against uh, the benchmark as uh, ruled out by the Central Bank of Nigeria earlier. So what is your reaction to this upward review as announced today? It shows that we have uh, a central bank that is uh, responsive to uh, the reality. Who cares what the politicians think about cash withdrawal limits? What we were concerned uh, from the civil society end and from the uh, concerns about uh, human rights is that people should not uh, suffer any contraction in their rights to the way they, uh, you know, they, 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 uh, they exercise the right of our property. So what the CBN has done with this review, uh, commendable, highly commendable as it is, is to say that, look, it, it's, 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 if it's about a transition from a, 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 an over-reliant uh, cash economy to a cashless economy, it should be done in a gradual manner and not that sudden uh, approach which it adopted earlier. For us, we're very happy with this uh, uh, development. To be honest, with you, the CBN has done creditably very well in all of its operations in trying to manage the Nigerian economy, the, the, the monetary situation in Nigeria, despite the topsy turvydom in the global economic uh, and financial situation. But for that uh, policy alone, uh, I don't think that um, uh, this, the CBN can be faulted in any way. But now it has even corrected it. So for us at this end, we're very happy with uh, uh, Gov uh, Governor uh, Godwin Emefile for responding to the people's cry that, that it was going to actually cause difficulty. And now they've seen it. Those who didn't understand us, who thought we were representing some political interest, now know that what we were after was simply, uh, you know, ease for uh, citizens. And citizens should not have a sense that they are being contracted and they are being, uh, uh, you know, no restricted unnecessarily. They should have that sense of freedom at all times. Uh, Professor Kenny Fair, I wonder if you're as excited as uh, Frank Tiete is with this uh, review of the uh, cash limits. What do you make of this? Uh, is it a case of the politicization of something, a policy that ordinarily should address fundamental economic issues? Well, I share his, uh, uh, his optimism um, to the point that it is necessary for the bank to prove, which it has proved, that it's a listening bank. It does talk to stakeholders, it does take the views of stakeholders, and it has research, very strong, the strongest research institution uh, that gives, tells it what we don't know. And then also, they do have um, a, a financial intelligence. So on the area of exclusive jurisdiction of the bank in monetary policy terms, they have the right of preemption based on the information in their, in their disposal and all of that. But after taking whatever action that they take in those areas of preemption, then they can listen very carefully, which they have done, and they have normalized and reduced the political temperature. But there are other areas, like in development finance intervention, where they consult far more extensively because it is an area of concurrent jurisdiction. 
So in that case, they work with a wider range of partners. So I do appreciate the circumstance, the tight rope that the central bank had to work uh, with. But then the fact that they have auto-corrected and they say, let's move forward. But that doesn't take away the merit of changing the currency, the merit of restricting the, the, those access. Those things are still there and are very commendable. Right. right. Uh, commendable is what Professor Kenny Fair says. But you know what, uh, Rister Frank THJ, um, let's take a look at these concerns as raised by uh, the House of, uh, uh, speaking about Lord Hannon, you know, the Baron of Kings Clare. He's actually raising concerns mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, due process, independence of public officers, and even the rule of law in Nigeria. And most Nigerians are raising concerns about, you know, since we're seeing all this reaction, especially from the international community, the perception of Nigeria and her finance governance issues. Talk to us about all of these reactions that we have seen, one of them that I have mentioned right now. All right, we've seen such a brazen disregard for uh, you know, due process and rule of law in the past, particularly by the Department of State Services. In the way and manner, uh, its previous Director General ordered the uh, lockdown of the National Assembly. And many judges in Nigeria have not, have not forgotten how their colleagues were embarrassed when in the middle of the night hooded uh, masked uh, officers of the DSS with submachine guns invaded their houses in the, uh, to, to arrest them, called, being called one uh, sting operation. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the DSS works for the state, yes, but uh, it has shown itself recently as a, an institution that seems to want to undermine uh, the cohesive uh, forces of uh, Nigeria. Uh, that's why it's trying to retrace itself by trying to use the courts as a cover for whatever, uh, you know, perceived political uh, move it intended to make against the CBN governor that uh, to, 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 to at this moment no charges whatsoever have been filed against him because probably there was none. But in Nigeria, we, uh, the Nigerian law enforcement authorities uh, have uh, perfected the act of using mere accusations to bring down a, a, a personality, especially someone who has worked very hard, who has uh, clean records, like Justice Walter Onogen. Uh, all they needed to do was to go and file ex parte application before, uh, before a quasi-judicial body like the Code of Conduct Tribunal Esparty, the man did it was not there, and upon that basis, the whole chief justice of Nigeria was removed. So all of these infractions against democracy, uh, the, the world has been watching, and it's been very worrisome. And now that uh, the world has become uh, used to this uh, underhand tactics by these law enforcement agents in Nigeria, knowing that they are serious recipes for, for truncating and dismantling Nigeria's democracy, indeed, the world should be worried. And that, that's the reason why the, the member of uh, the, the, the British Parliament made that uh, uh, note of concern you know it's not just it's not just about that it's also about nigeria's economy it's about foreign direct investment what the dss had planned to do and i'm, I'm so thankful to justice uh, uh, soho john soho and a very a very circumspect and diligent judge i it's not just a kind of judge that is a pushover when they approached him to with a secret a secret application and uh, you see I, I read snippets of his reaction and is that you look you just can't make such weight allegations against the man and then you don't bring the materials before the court you don't tell me who you have arrested you don't tell me who are the the the, the confessions that have been made and documents and actual transfers i'm not going to be used as a you know uh, a, a basis for for truncating uh, you know the due process you know I, I i must tell you something this what john soho has done is not only to preserve the polity but to also ensure that civil liberties are preserved at all times and that the courts, the, the principle of separation of powers between the judiciary, the executive, and the legislature uh, is, is actually meant to protect and to the, the, the people and to ensure stability. What the DSS wanted to do, they, if they wanted to arrest the Mephili, they know what they could have done to. They, they, who, did they obtain a court order before they invaded the judges' houses? Did they obtain a court order before they locked up the National Assembly? So you want to now rope in the judiciary and tell the whole world that, oh, it was even the Federal High Court chief judge that granted us permission to go and have him arrested. The judge wasn't fooled. He didn't allow himself to be fooled. And I can assure you, no judge in Nigeria anymore, with what has happened to Onogen, with the SSs that they know, that this guy 
guys can often be driven by political tendencies, will not allow themselves to be used to, against civil liberties, against the known principles of due process that will enhance and stabilize Nigeria. And what the judge simply told them, without telling them, was that go and do whatever you know how to do best and face the wrath of the Nigerian people and face the, 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 how the, the, the Nigerian polity disintegrates as it approaches election. You remove the civil justice of Nigeria the, 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 in such disgraceful manner. You also want to remove a, an internationally acclaimed personality like Godwin Emefele for stabilizing Nigeria's economy on charges that are unknown, that are unfounded, that are actually clear in figments of somebody's imagination. I mean, yes, it, yes. it wouldn't have stood in any way. That was too dangerous a, a task to embark on. Great and I'm point. sure they will retrace their steps. Yeah. All right, let's bring it back to Professor Kenefe. I mean, you, you are the economist. Uh, let's leave the political angle to all of this. What are the short, medium, and long-term effects that this would have on the Nigerian economy? Because uh, those who criticize Godwin uh, you know, limits to cash uh, withdrawal say that it would have you know, brought about a currency black market, especially in the rural areas. Do you agree? And how long do you think this limits really should subsist? No, I, of course I don't agree. The thing is, we, we, nobody disputes the fact that Nigeria really does need to change their currency. You know, how many years? 20 years ago. So they all agree on that. Initially, they were divided opinion, but they've now agreed. The consensus is that we need to change that currency. Mm -hmm. If not for the fact that the electronic, in, you know, there is an electronic tag on this currency that makes it possible for security agents to detect these monies when they are being uh, abused. And there are so many other reasons. People agree that. What they were saying initially is that, oh, the time is too short. Mm -hmm. But they moved away from that time is too short to respond to the deadline to say, oh, the quantity, the quantum of money is too small. And that's where they're going. Nobody disputes that these two things should happen. But it was how soon it could happen right. and the magnitude of that. Mm -hmm. And what they have done, CBN has done, is to relax that, uh, uh, that, that restriction and then say, okay, now let's expand it five times, five fold for individuals. Don't forget, your wife can also they, they take out the same, uh, the same amount as the husband, mm -hmm. and it's one million that they have to spend in a week. Mm. So th that, that's been relaxed. Right. But there are other things that if you have to take much higher than that, there are procedures. And then, uh -huh. you, of course, you should be prepared to pay the yeah, small tax. You, you make a good point. That, let, let me just put this. This item, too, that you just, you know, talked about that, uh, you know, addresses compelling uh, circumstances that may attract 3 uh, to 5% uh, processing fee. Uh, help us understand what this pressing or compelling circumstances uh, really mean. And does the CBN really have the systems in place to ensure that the uh, deposit money banks don't circumvent or help those who want to circumvent the system to do so? No, no, the compelling circumstances are subject to review and then there are documentary evidence required. And CBN has the technology to monitor what every bank does within 24 hours. They can actually see things that banks do. So they can review an application that has been approved and they, and they come down very heavy on the banks in terms of penalties. And I know that this money is coming billions, so they actually charge banks more for any infraction than they will charge individuals. So I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Those are some of the areas that CBN is really up to the task. Right. Well, gentlemen, as we get ready to wrap up this conversation, Professor Kenny, if, uh, in 30 seconds, I would love you to actually talk about this kinds of reports and how we affect our foreign direct investment. That's one. And Barrister Frank Tietje, uh, the question of terrorism financing, really, um, the monetary policy, some are concerned that this might jeopardize it. And, you know, for the fact that the DSS said they had evidence, do they really need to go to court, you know? before he could have been arrested, if truly they had that evidence. Frank Tietje, let me start with you quickly before Kenny Fair wraps it up. I knew the implications of moving against uh, the CBN governor. They were actually directly moving against the stable Nigerian economy and uh, for flimsy grounds. And they, they merely needed the validation of the court, which the court refused uh, to, to, to give. The DSS didn't need to do that. And again, when you talk about terrorism financing, how? 
How can you, you know, accuse an individual that has been responsible for putting out, I'm talking about the, the, uh, the CBN governor, Godwin Emefili, who's been responsible for putting out policies that have, been, that, that have ensured serious counter-terrorism measures, uh, 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 ensuring that uh, there is no form of illicit financial flows in and out of Nigeria. How can you do that? So it, it, it shows you that the man, to a large extent, has clean hands, and they couldn't find anything to rope him in the way and they, 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 they do to other persons who are, who are supposed to operate independently in the interest of Nigeria, and that's why they wanted to use the court, and they failed woefully. Professor, you have the last word. Yes, I would say that it is neutral in terms of foreign direct investment or foreign portfolio investment, uh, and it's because, in fact, it does generate more confidence to the investors in, in respect to our better uh, monetary policy management and macroeconomic management, because they know that the risks uh, help, uh, helps speculation. You know, what, what has been happening to our currency helps speculation. And what the way they're moving this money is laundered or, or spoiling, whatever it is, also affects inflation. So they know that that action is in good faith, is in the interest of the country. It only brings more prudence, accountability, and financial uh, transparency in the operation of our monetary policy. So there is very right. positive for, okay. for foreign direct investment. All right, let's trust our central bank handlers to do the right thing. Well, thank you very much, both of you gentlemen, Professor Kenny Faisal, an economist, and Frank Tete, a Rice News Analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>